You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, which can be found on our website at treyerwilderness.com and also on iTunes. Welcome to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where we are homesteading traditionally 100% off-grid today and offering preparedness and survival tips for tomorrow. Here's your host, Tammy Treyer. Hey everyone, Tammy Treyer, Mountain Woman Radio. Really glad to have you joining me today. Today, I do not have a guest. You're stuck with me today. I am out in the wilderness here today. It's a beautiful, sunny morning. It's going to get really hot, so I'm out here early with the dogs and I've had a lot that I'd love to share with you. Um, my struggle right now, as many of you know, is I had, a, had some health issues at the beginning of the year and if you aren't familiar with them, you can watch the video my husband and I did by going to treyerwilderness.com slash my health journey video. It's on our YouTube channel and uh, I've got a year and a half of detoxing and regaining my health and I'm a very optimistic person as most of you know and uh, I, th I really want to kind of share some heart-to-heart uh, -heart things today because although I'm an optimistic person I'm human and that's the part I want to share with you because oftentimes you know you see people on their websites and their videos and listen to them on their radio shows and you know, they make it sound so easy and and like nothing ever goes wrong and that's one thing that our family really wants to try to share not that we want to share our gloom for sure but that you know reality is things do go wrong there are struggles in life and the most important thing is perseverance and pushing through these struggles and that's really what my life is about right now that is my new norm <laughs> is pushing through a lot of things that are very new to me um, very hard for me really I am dealing with a body that is very unpredictable so to make plans it is very hard because even my best set intentions can't be met when my body isn't cooperating and the struggles I have with my body are fatigue and um, I have a lot of brain fog which is very hard for me because my job entails my brain I'm a web designer I'm a writer and I do a lot of thinking and when you can't think it's really hard <laughs> so this last month has been very rough on me uh, it's been a very mentally challenging month because I'm running into obstacles um, where my endurance is not what it used to be I'm trying to do some in the garden I'm afraid to plant my garden because I'm afraid that my body will not withstand all that's required of it and it will be on me because my guys are busy with other things so in lieu of not planning everything I have to plant something because I absolutely love having my garden and I love being in my garden so it is good for me but at the same time it can be hard on me so everything in moderation remember that everything in moderation and remember to be a good friend to yourself that is where this month has brought me um, to be a better friend to myself because I've been greatly struggling trying to self-diagnose trying to figure it out trying to fix it and I just need to really live it I just need to be in it I need to to exist I need to realize my limitations that are current and I need to uh, embrace it you know instead of being caught up in it because I don't want to miss my life a dear friend of mine um, Jessica Espinoza and you can find her at both deliciousobsessions.com and jessicaespinoza.com I'll put the links in the uh, description and in the show notes 
But um, she's a dear friend, and she sent out a newsletter this week that had a link to a video basically asking if we're enjoying our life. She uh, deals with Hashimoto's disease. I think I said that right. And um, which is a thyroid disorder. And she's been battling that for quite a few years. And she too, it was nice to read her post because she too was in the same place that I am currently. And through her experience and her paying it forward, she allowed me to grab my bootstraps this week and really push myself forward. And I thanked her in an email, but I'm going to thank her online too and on my radio show here because that's the blessing of being good to one another. It's a blessing of sharing. It's a blessing of sharing our knowledge. And that's what many of us are doing online here. And I just feel really blessed to be connected with so many wonderful people that are helping me through my journey you know, whether it's reaching out periodically and just saying, hey, or whether it's like Rhonda from the Farmer's Lamp, who is with me on a daily basis, and kind of my own personal cheerleader, which I'm very grateful for, as well as my men. And, you know, it is, it is a hard thing when you're thrown into a spiral and suddenly your life is all upside down. And some people are stronger than others. Some, you know, it's just, we're all different. So... That's why I wanted to talk about it because I'm really a strong person and I'm very optimistic and a very positive person and that's a good thing but it can also be a bad thing and the way it's a bad thing is that when I am down because I desire to be up and to be positive and happy all the time when I am down I beat myself up something fierce I kick myself you know, and it's a brutal, it's a brutal, almost vicious cycle that can occur. And that's why I'm saying, be a good friend to yourself. You wouldn't kick your friend if they were down. You'd give them words of encouragement. And that's where I was lacking. I wasn't giving myself words of encouragement. And I've talked about this before. Our words and our thoughts are more powerful than you will ever, ever, ever imagine. And... It's really important for us, you know, to cheer ourselves on and fill ourselves and surround ourselves with positive things. I watched a story on Tim Tebow uh, last night with the Mountain Boy. Great story. Great man. And, you know, just being able to filter what's coming in, you know. I want to be positive. I want to be uplifted. And, you know, sometimes we can't do that on our own by ourselves. We can try. But there's so many resources available to us, friends available to us. And, you know, we gotta, we got to kind of filter what's coming in and what we're surrounding ourselves with. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize also. You know, there are some people in our lives that are just uh, vicious. They are vicious and draining um, of our spirit. You know, they don't uplift us. They're always the negative Nelly, you know, or just always themselves are in a depressed or negative state. And, you know, as much as you want to help people like that and you try, if you can't help them, sometimes you do have to separate from them or at least limit your um, time with them because they can be really draining on you. And I've had to do that. I've had to do that through my life. And it's not always a nice thing, a nice feeling, but when you're through it, it is because you've alleviated a lot of negativity and stress in your life. But I just wanted to share this stuff with you today because I was in a low spot. I'm really struggling because there's so many things that I need to do, so many things I desire to do. But right now, God has me right where he wants me. And I've got to take ownership of that. And I can deal with it one of two ways. I can be miserable or I can be happy like I wish to be. And that's what I wanted to share because I was in a spot where I wasn't coming back up the way I normally do. So surrounding myself with positive things, positive people, positive thoughts, and doing the best I can possibly do every day. You know, I take my days day to day, and sometimes I even take it minute to minute throughout my day, depending 
on my health because there have been times where I've been flat on my back on the couch for three days, even on the healing side of this, just to allow my body to rest and um, to fight through um, maybe pushing too many toxins at one time and so forth. So, you know, life, life throws us curveballs and it's all about how we handle them. But I wanted to be real today and I wanted to share that. You know, I'm no different than the rest of you. And although I am a happy-go-lucky person and I'm very positive and I am very happy normally, there are times where I struggle too and I want that to be known. I'm, I'm no different than you. I'm really not. I'm no different than you. But I do want to be a light. I want to be a light and I want to be a beacon to help other people. And that's what this show is about. That is what our website is about at treyerwilderness.com. That is what our YouTube channel is about. You can find us by searching for Treyer Wilderness on YouTube. Or you can just go to treyerwilderness.com slash YouTube and it will take you right there. But there's a lot of things going on here in the wilderness. It's always a shuffle and it's always interesting season to season and always crazy trying to keep up because there's always some, some something to do and a lot to do typically. Right now we look like we live in a jungle because I uh, haven't gotten a chance to keep up with the grass so with my health and the guys working and so it's crazy but it's all good and it's my jungle and I love it. <laughs> but how are you guys? What are some of the things that you that you struggle with. I would love to hear from you. You're welcome to email me anytime at survive at treyerwilderness.com. I would love to know what some of your struggles are. Um, what are some things you'd love to hear more about on the radio show? Share that with me. I would love to know. Now, we've had a lot of great guests on. I hope that you've been listening in and uh, got a chance to listen to our wonderful guests, see what they have to offer, check them out. But during all these great guests, we also had a very interesting occurrence in our home, and I wanted to share about that too. I'm going to take a short break here for some words from our sponsors, and I will be right back. Are you a blogger or author struggling to keep up with the demands of your business? Are you also afraid to hire somebody on in fear of that inadequate person and the struggles that go along with it? We'll look no further. Contact Michelle of mdh-services.com for a reliable, efficient, and trustworthy virtual assistant. Offering editing, manuscript editing, blog post creation, blog work, administrative work, clerical work, social media sharing, and so much more. She's very organized, efficient, and she will always be a step ahead of you. Trust me. So contact Michelle of mdh-services.com and take your blog and writing to the next level. Do you have a loved one or are you suffering from celiac disease or a gluten intolerance? Trying to find that perfect flour? Whether you are baking cookies, flaky pie crust, or baking breads from scratch, or you are looking for a quick cake from a package, look no further. Better Batter offers non-GMO gluten-free products with an assortment of packaged items, as well as flour packaged in varying sizes, including their bulk sizes, perfect for those of you that are practicing your preparedness skills. Better Batter is not just another gluten-free flour. It's what you have been searching for. Visit betterbatter.org. Do you have your free digital subscription to Prepare Magazine yet? If not, then hurry over to preparemag.com and start getting each monthly issue sent directly to your inbox. It's easy. All you have to do is go to preparemag.com, enter your name and email address, and you're subscribed. Consider signing up for the premium membership for past issues and exclusive resources. You can even subscribe to the beautiful print version of Prepare Magazine. Visit preparemag.com and choose the option that's most valuable to you. Prepare Magazine, encouraging, empowering, and enriching your journey. We're back. And again, I'm out in the wilderness here, so you might hear the birds chirping and the dogs panting by and me heavy breathing. I hope not too much. <laughs> but uh, I walk every day between one and five miles, sometimes more, but that's my average. And it's part of my protocol for healing. And quite honestly, if I could just keep walking all day long, I would feel so amazing. Because when I'm out here, the, the air... The wilderness, I don't know, some, some of you can, I'm sure can relate. I'm a nature buff, and it just lures me in 
and it feels so good. And when I'm walking, my body feels good. It's removing toxins, it's healing, it's rejuvenating, it's reshaping, yay. <laughs> and uh, it just feels good. When I'm home, I struggle a little bit, and um, part of that is because we are in a very wet area, and one of my biggest struggles from my health situation is biotoxins, which is mold, fungus, bacteria. And because we are in such a wet area, I'm finding that till the sun comes out and really dries things out, I was suffering pretty good. And that's hard. I have a particular gene, or lacking thereof a gene, that breaks down metals in my system and the biotoxins properly. So I'm on a supplement to help me with that so that I can break down and rid my body of these things. But having them in my environment and having them affect me so greatly is extremely hard. So that was part of my struggle. So as much as I love my home, my home was sort of killing me for a while there. So now things are starting to dry out here in Idaho and uh, I'm feeling much better. But to be able to just walk, I can't sit and think and I can't hold a conversation sometimes to save my life. But I can walk like a champ and I feel so good doing it. <laughs> But again, this is, the, this is my new norm. This is the new phase in my life, and it's part of my journey. And that's why I'm sharing it with you, because I'm sure many of you have health issues and struggles. Some of you may have chronic illnesses and autoimmune diseases also, which is what I'm battling right now, is a lot with my autoimmune system. So, you know, my prayers are with you. And like I said, I would love to hear from you. Share your story. Share your thoughts with me. And... Uh, be sure to check out the blog. There will be information on there about the symptoms of silicone poisoning because as things progress through this year, there's a lot more um, coming out about it. Sarah Jane McShane was on the cover of Muscle Health, I believe it was, sharing her story. And uh, Johnson & Johnson is getting slammed for their silicone mesh silicone stomach belts and ports and even you know there's surgeries for men that involve silicone and other surgeries for women that involve silicone and um, it's really dangerous it's killing a lot of people and they don't know what it's caused what's causing their illnesses so we're really trying to be um, in the forefront sharing that information. So check out the blog for the symptoms of silicone poisoning and to silicone toxicity because um, they're not just made with silicone, there's heavy metals in them and a lot of other products and chemicals in them that are causing additional health issues. So I encourage you to check out our website and find out more about that. And uh, I'm just thankful to be a vessel that I that God chose to help other people. So that's why I thought instead of sitting in the corner rocking when I'm feeling down, I need to be sharing this with you guys. So like I said, it's a heart to heart this, this week and I, I'm glad to have you. Additionally, I wanted to share something with you. Um, I started talking about that before we took our break. Mountain Man ended up in the ER a couple weeks back. Um, that was one of the scariest things I've ever experienced and not something I wish to relive but I was really pleased with how things went and that was because I was prepared he had fallen off a ladder 16 feet off of a ladder when we were building our home and thankfully was okay he has a small portion of his heel that has no feeling on it but he didn't break anything and he was conscious when I when I found him, so it was it was okay. But at that point, um, it wasn't a fun experience either, and that was what made me get involved in MediFlight at the time. It is a helicopter service uh, for those of us that live in the middle of nowhere, so that we can get help when we need it. It's now changed to LifeFlight.org. I don't know. Honestly, if this is one that is local to me, 
or if there are other services across the country that are available to you, but I encourage you to check it out. If you have health issues and you are living in the middle of nowhere, away from things where it's going to take longer for medical services to get to you, it's definitely something you want to have in place. We did not need to use it, but it was next on the list. So what happened that night, and God certainly had his hand on us that night because everything was very different than a normal evening. Had it been a normal evening, I would have woke up a widow the next morning. Uh, usually I go to bed after the mountain man, only like five, ten minutes. But till I get myself around and get in there, I'm, I'm a little late getting into the bedroom at night. So it just so happened that night I was in the bedroom ahead of him. And again, God orchestrated that. I heard him chew the over-the-counter sleep pill that he took. And I knew it wasn't supposed to be chewed. It was something that's supposed to be swallowed, but I heard him chew it. He walked out of the bedroom into the kitchen, which is only a couple yards away. He filled his water jug, came back, shut out the light, and laid down. Well, indicator number one, that there was something wrong. He shut the light out. We usually, you know, lay and talk for a little while about our day, recap and so forth. And that didn't happen. And when I did talk to him, when he shut out the light, he was really airy, like really spacey. Like, you know, I asked if he was okay and he didn't respond right away. And when he did, he's like, oh, I'm okay. I love you, which was really not typical of him. So it's kind of weird. And I'm like, dude, you're scaring me. Are you all right? And then he didn't respond at all. So I shook him. And under normal circumstances, he would have been like, what in the world are you doing to me? No response. So I turned the light on and his pupils were ginormous. They were huge. So I instantly knew we had a problem going on here. So thankfully, Rhonda was a nurse for 26 years. So that was another blessing was having extra hands and somebody knowledgeable there. Because as it turned out, it was I was very blessed to have her present. She was just helping me keep him alive, basically, and keeping him breathing. Um, he had stopped breathing seven or eight times before the ambulance arrived. And, you know, we were checking his pulse and making sure his eyes were open and shaking him to keep him awake. And, and I was very grateful for that because I called 911 and couldn't get through. I called the sheriff's local number and it told me it was not in existence, which it is. It just, the local phone service gets wonky. So, fail number two. Tried again, still couldn't get through. Called a friend. Got him, and thank you, John. He called the ambulance, and as it turns out, he didn't have enough information for 911, and it went across the scanner, and another friend of ours heard it and started Facebook messaging me. So thank, I'm thankful for technology as much as sometimes I hate it. I'm very thankful for it. So I was texting and messaging her while we were trying to keep him breathing because all of a sudden he'd just stop breathing, and then he'd just take a deep breath and go, <gasps> you know, so it was very alarming. It was very, very alarming, and... Um, the other problem is we are gated in by the state of Idaho. So nobody has a key except for us and the state. So um, the mountain boy ran out and unlocked the gate so that they could get back in. And thankfully the same friend that was Facebook messaging me, her husband is a deputy, and he led the ambulance back. So needless to say, it all ended well. But God certainly orchestrated it, and I don't recommend that you ever chew a pill that is meant to be swallowed because what happened is he probably had a reaction to the coating of the pill and uh, it wasn't an anthrolactic shock allergy or experience it was an experience where it made this part of his brain that tells you to breathe it put it to sleep so and was shutting it down so it was very scary and very alarming but because I was prepared, and when I say that, I mean when he fell off the roof in 2010, at that point I played through my head over and over and over again what would happen if we were in, had an emergency situation. 
and you can prepare and plan and have protocols in place and seriously it will make life so much easier for you when you go through those experiences because it was like I, I was I was alarmed but I wasn't panicked I had gone over it so many times in my head and we had talked about it as a family that it was nothing for me to just react I didn't pause I didn't panic I knew what I needed to do and that's what we have to do and our nature as human beings is to panic and if you don't have a protocol in place that's what you're gonna do and you may do it anyway it's something that you have gotta be conscious of that you're not overreacting or panicking because you're not gonna be any help for yourself or for the victim or person that's in in danger so that's why I'm sharing this today I shared it on the YouTube channel and I wrote a post about it on our blog and I thought I'd talk to you guys about it personally because it was it was quite an experience it was like I said it's not something that I wish to relive at any given time. <laughs> uh, watching your loved one, your spouse, not breathing and being totally unable to, you know, help him. You know, it really, really hit home. And uh, there are some really good resources available to keep on hand at home as well as to participate in. Um, Dr. James Hubbard has some great materials. He is a doctor for 30 years and is sharing his knowledge and has uh, penned several books. And uh, he has a new book out that is a full handbook, complete handbook. And um, I encourage you to check it out at treyerwilderness.com slash medical handbook he also has two courses available and um, you can find out more about those as well and they are inexpensive courses where he has videos and shares how to take care of medical situations when medical care isn't available and his videos are great I had the privilege to take his courses and they are very informative very educational and it may not be things you're going to use all the time but to have them in your knowledge bank is so incredibly important and you can find those courses at you can find the survival doctors complete handbook by going to treyerwilderness.com slash medical handbook all one word and the survival doctors courses there is the lifesaver course and then there's also the master course and you can find those by going to treyerwilderness.com slash life courses and also by going to treyerwilderness.com slash master course so check those out and again lifeflight.org is what I was referring to in regard to the emergency services that are available so as I said you know God really orchestrated that night because had things gone differently I could have gone in there in the bedroom two minutes later and I would have assumed he was just dropped dead exhausted which he was the man works like a, an ox he's constantly in motion constantly moving and he's always doing very strenuous heavy work so I would have just left him sleep and I would have woke up a widow and that's just a really overwhelming very scary thought for me and when I think about it it just brings tears to my eyes because you know stuff happens and I'm really glad that stuff happened the way it did that night and that I'm able to share this knowledge with you and I can't express enough to have protocols in place if you have young children have and regardless if you have young children have phone numbers by the phone if your spouse or husband is like mine he is technologically challenged and admits it and he he hates the phone he hates talking on the phone he hates calling people and if he doesn't need to worry about it he doesn't so where the phone numbers are and how to call somebody or who to call is not part of his mo because I do it and I know there are many of you out there in the same boat so having those numbers by the phone and see for us we do have a situation because our phone which is a magic jack phone 
does not dial out well and, and that we're clear. And when people call in, it's not clear, but it leaves a great message. So we know people are trying to reach us. Then we have to call them back on Google Hangouts or Skype. And the connection isn't always good. And it just so happens the weekend before and the weekend after the incident with my husband, um, we didn't have internet, therefore we didn't have phones. Because everything that we depend on to connect to the outside world is connected to our internet. So, you know, sometimes we're on a wing and a prayer, but you know what? That was a decision we made when we wanted to live this lifestyle and none of us would trade it for anything. So you learn to work around, work with it. Worst case scenario that night, we would have thrown him in the truck, drove like idiots to get to the hospital to get him there in time or at least get him over to where the ambulance is housed. You know, so there's always something you can do, but being proactive and having protocols in place could not be more important. Educating your children on what to do. Honestly, um, the first time we had the incident when the mountain man fell off the ladder, the mountain boy froze. He was 13 and he just did not know how to react. Now, granted, he is high functioning autistic, so that played a role. So he was just frozen in his, in his tracks, didn't know what to do, didn't know how to react. And this time he was very active. You know, he, he played the role. He put the dogs in the bathroom so that the medics could come in. Um, he went out and opened the gate and granted he did speed out the driveway a little bit and did a little burnout. Um, he caught himself and slowed down, got out there, got the gate open and came back and, you know, so you got to remember it's a panic and a scare for our children too, but if they are prepared and know what is expected of them or what they could be doing or how they could help, it will make them a lot more comfortable too, even in a scary situation. So I encourage you to do that and to have things in place and I encourage you to think about this stuff. You know, um, you know, last year we had fi threats of forest fires and you can find information on our website about wildfires. You know, you got to have things in place. Some of you deal with hurricanes or flooding. Have something in place so you know what you're going to do when disaster strikes, when things happen. And be prepared. What will you do if you're separated? Where will you meet? You know, and another thing I want to really touch on, um, Mountain Man and I did some classes at the Sustainable Preparedness Expo in Spokane, Washington. And I realized one of the things I forgot to mention, you know, with our children, you know, we were talking about wilderness survival and teaching children how to light a fire and know how to build a shelter and and things like that. And although a lot of people in today's society will think, what in the world would they need that skill for? Well, let's just say they're on a field trip and their bus breaks down in the middle of nowhere. And it's a little bit on the cooler side, October, November. You know, what a amazing thing if your child is well-versed and can help classmates or her classmates to exist till the help comes you know being able to light a fire you know I understand I have children I've you know but I taught the mountain boy how to start fires it gives me comfort when he leaves the house or when we get separated that I know he can handle himself and take care of himself and he knows the skills he needs to know what a comfort to know that your children are capable of taking care of themselves and know what to do. You know, sheltering them and keeping them from those things, and like I said, granite fires are, can, can be a dangerous thing, but it's just like anything else. It's like a firearm. It's like anything. You need to teach them proper skills, the right way, the wrong way, what to do and what not to do. You know, and um, empowering children to be able to do these things it's really important. It will empower them. And something else that we've always focused on is giving um, the mountain boy his own gear and letting him earn some of his gear because having his own gear really helps him to mature, take care of his things, and learn to utilize it. 
They can go off on their own and practice their skills or go off with their friend and practice their skills of creating a shelter and, you know, let's kids be kids instead of being in front of the machines. And something I really encourage, I encourage all of you to do those things because practicing our skills and our protocols is just as important as having them in place. If you don't practice, you know, it's kind of like riding a bike. Yeah, you might get back on and do okay. It might be a little wobbly. And that's why you want to practice because you don't want to be wobbly when you're out in the wilderness and you need a fire and you can't get one started. And as we talked about at the expo, you know, starting a fire with a lighter is great, but what if you don't have a lighter? What if your lighter breaks? You know, um, being able to start fires in a traditional or primitive method are not easy. I have a video on the Mountain Woman Journal's channel on doing a bow drill fire. It's not easy. It's fun. I love doing it. Uh, it's a challenge, but it's not easy. And when you're in a push-come-to-shove situation, you want to be able to know how to do these things. So those are my ramblings for today. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed them. I'm glad I got a chance to chat with you and also to share my heart and my struggles because I want you to know that you're not, you're not alone. You're not struggling by yourself. We all have struggles. And how we pr progress through our struggles is important. You know, we don't want to be sitting stuck and rocking in corners. We want to be vibrant and enjoying the journey. And uh, that'll be another uh, show upcoming, is enjoying the journey. And again, thank you, Jessica Espinoza. I appreciate what you did for me this week, even though you may not even realize. And uh, for you folks, I want to encourage you. I listened to a great sermon last Sunday by J. Earl Crank. And um, I'll put links in the uh, show notes where you can find his channel. Uh, he suggested, you know, when you're struggling, like I said, surrounding yourself with positive things, what better of a positive thing could we turn to, in my opinion, other than the Bible? And what he recommended is that every day for 30 days, you start your day off reading 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's the love chapter, and it's a very wise chapter. And I encourage you to embrace 1 Corinthians chapter 13 every day. Also encourage you to smile more, enjoy your life, enjoy the journey you're on, and don't stay to yourself. Um, talk, talk to others, talk about your struggles. Talking about them isn't being gloomy, it's just sharing. And I just encourage you uh, to hang in there, persevere, and be a fighter through whatever you may be going through. And enjoy your summer and your gardening. And I look forward to spending some quality time with you again in the future. So till our next show, you guys take care. And God bless. You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where you will learn something new every week. We hope you enjoyed the show and encourage you to join us at TreyerWilderness.com. And be sure to connect with us on iTunes. Remember, your reviews on iTunes are very important to us and help us reach more people just like you.